alaikum and a very good day. I bid to everyone. Today, my team member and I are going to explain about ocean acidification that is happening all around the world. My name is Nur Hanani Binti Hasnizan. And my name is Nur Ashabika Bekti Sharon Azli. We hope that you will enjoy and learn new knowledge from our video. Together, we fight and help to save the oceans. Since the Industrial Revolution, levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have continued to increase from human activities. About a quarter of these emissions enter the oceans, which dissolve and react with water. This chemical reaction creates carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the ocean. making it more acidic and reducing the availability of shell building materials. The effect of ocean acidification are fed by many marine organisms. Ocean acidification reduces carbonate ion, which is available for shell formation. It can also cause a range of biological effects. Some species may thrive in a more acidic environment while others may adapt over time by changing their diets or moving to more favorable environments. Some populations may decline or disappear. When small species that form the basis of food webs are affected by ocean acidifications, then the whole food web can be affected. Cold oceans are vulnerable to the impact of ocean acidification. Why? Because Yeses such as CO2 are absorbed more easily in colder water. Plus, ocean acidification is taking place in all of the oceans. There are conditions in each region which further contribute to ocean acidification. Geologic history tells us that biodiversity can be threatened by exposure to increased acidity in the oceans. There's a huge range of harmful consequences, including drops in metabolic rate or drops in immune response to other organisms such as parasites or bacteria that are in the environment. And we know that drops in pH can cause destruction of coral by triggering chemical reactions that result in an overall drop of the amount of carbonate ions available. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means a bit more chemistry. Many organisms that live in the ocean use a very special building material, calcium carbonate which is dissolved in seawater and it is made by this reaction add calcium atoms to carbonate ions and you make calcium carbonate a material that goes into the skeletons of organisms that live in the sea such as corals and mollusks and crabs they are very dependent on calcium carbonate. Unfortunately, these free carbonate ions are also recombining with those busy, very reactive hydrogen ions to make more bio bicarbonate. So, this reduces the available calcium carbonate that organisms would otherwise be able to use. And that means that organisms with calcium carbonate skeleton are going to have trouble maintaining their skeleton simply because they can get enough of the calcium carbonate to grow and repair their shells and skeleton. It turns out that it's not just a coral, mollusks, and crabs that are affected. Single cell organisms called foraminifera and coccolithophores, which are Close to the base of the food webs and terrible important in marine ecosystems are among the most affected. If you put a foraminifera or forums under a microscope, they look like uh, they look like little spirals and funny shape box. They are fantastic things to look at. Forums are like little single cell amoebae that make shells. Their metabolism and ability to make those shells is deeply affected by pH level in the oceans. Now, coccolithophores. Coccolithophores are very interesting. 
somewhat mysterious with single cell algae that also take up calcium carbonate from the ocean to make a coccolith. Lith means rock and coco roughly means berry shape. So these organisms are shaped like tiny fruits but with a rocky covering. Not everyone know about this but now you do because they are plants. They are really important as phytoplankton producer in ocean ecosystem. No one's too sure why they make their calcium carbonate covering, but the mere fact that they are making their calcium carbonate shells means that they are also going to be deeply affected by decreasing ocean nutrition. What impact greater carbon dioxide absorption is having on the marine environment, U.S. Geological Survey scientists are gathering vital data from these remote waters, collecting carbon dioxide information and related chemical samples in the survey. Uncharted Arctic Ocean will fill in important gaps of the knowledge for a greater understanding of the impacts increased carbon dioxide is having on ocean chemistry. This unprecedented data set will help to help the trends in ocean acidification, analyze relations between ocean chemistry trends and human and natural activities, and determine implications for classifying organisms. Understanding climate change impacts in the Arctic is of high global priority. Working with federal agencies and the international scientific community, the USGS continues to address an issue that will have broad global influence on the marine world. To reduce carbon footprints. We can make sensible plans to try and reduce those emissions. One way to do this is to use renewable energy sources like wind solar or nuclear energy. Instead of using fossil fuels, another the options would be to use a more efficient manufacturing process which reduces less energy in the first place and also produce less waste reducing waste is actually really important because waste has often broken down by decomposer which can release methane. Government also can help for example by introducing new laws or taxing companies based on how many greenhouse gases they emit. There is also something called carbon capture technology that available to capture the carbon dioxide forms when we burn fossil fuels. Before it can escape into the atmosphere, it can then be stored deep underground and cracks in the rocks, such as old oil, wells where it cannot escape to the environment.